What's going on friends? Carnivores, happy January, happy World Carnivore Month. Some crazy news going on here. Joe Rogan announced that he is going carnivore for World Carnivore Month. And in his tweet, this is actually a true story, he actually says two things are going on. One, he and his buddies, Bert and Tom, as well as Ari, basically he said Ari wasn't quite as fat, but he said, we are going to do a weight loss podcast at the end of February and we're working out the details now but we're getting body composition scales. We're going to all go on diets and exercise a lot to see what kinds of results we can get in eight weeks. We were all pretty disgusted with how fat we were when Ari shamed us into getting a scale during the last podcast, except for Ari, who actually looked pretty good. I weighed 205, which is about as fat as I've ever been. And my goal is to get down to around 190. The second thing is that for the whole month of January, I am going strict carnivore diet. January is World Carnivore Month, and I figured, fuck it, let's see what happens. So as an experiment for the entire month of January, I'm not eating anything but meat and eggs. I'm getting my blood work done on Monday, and then again, when I'm done with the diet, but I've been on it now for about five days, and I'm already looking leaner. My energy level has been excellent too, kind of shockingly good. I'm making sure this isn't a temporary placebo, placebo effect, but at least for now, I'm definitely experiencing some benefits. Many of you, Many of you know I mostly eat wild game, which is very lean, so I'm supplementing with that with beef fat and some other fattier cuts of meat like bison, like this bison ribeye I just took out of the Traeger grills. I think that's exciting for the community. Joe's obviously a huge influencer, and I have to stay, I would have loved to seen the look on James Wilk, lightning James Wilk's face when he saw this post go out because he was on the podcast debating Chris Kresser kind of steamrolled Chris Kresser after a while with some debate tactics and really pushed his agenda propaganda film, The Game Changers, hard. So it's exciting to see Joe Rogan come out as a witness to this debate and go, you know what, I'm going carnivore. I want to lose weight. I want to feel optimal. And he's going to do his lab. So if this comes back, as I expect it will, uh, it's going to be a great experience for everybody. It's going to be a lot of great sort of momentum for the community. And I think it's going to be awesome for him to see that. So, so on to point two, the Golden Globe Awards went vegan. This is so sad, but so true. Joaquin Phoenix, the actor of the Joker, who is a devout vegan advocate, actually convinced the organizers of the event to go on a vegan diet. He got some support from some local actors. The whole premise of this was to be more carbon friendly to the planet, that animals are polluting the earth. It's funny, but if you look at the immediate criticism, it's pretty obvious how bad and how misleading and how just how hypocritical this is because it's just silly. Some tweets from the event and the publicity that went around this whole situation. Golden Globe idiots were actually eating a vegan dinner to fight climate change while their 750 gas guzzling limousines were parked outside and over 100 private jets were used to bring people to the ceremony. This kind of reminds me of the Lewis Hamilton situation that came out a few months back where Lewis Hamilton said he just couldn't take it anymore, that he was going to go vegan to save the planet. Meanwhile, he's driving a one mile to gallon gas guzzling F1 car all around the world, polluting the earth with hydrocarbons that are being pumped out of the earth into the atmosphere. He's got a private jet flying him around. It's clear that it's the fossil fuel, the burning of the fossil fuels that's really having it. Another tweet that came out about this, showing pictures from Dan Wooten, one of the uh, chief editors. He says, this is the plant-based meal being given to all guests at the Globe and Glo Golden Globe Awards this year. No option with meat at all, no choice. Welcome to Hollywood in 2020, where vegan, where vegan extremists rule. It's just puking images. It's great to want to be doing great things for the planet. It's great to want to save the planet. And I'm not knocking that. I think it's misguided and it's really poor to spread misinformation. And if you're going to be tweeting and, and doing big things like changing the way that things are operated, like the Golden Globe ceremony and what they feed the participants based on information you believe right, you better be doing some due diligence. You better be actually looking into the data, doing some information before you push that agenda. I think this tweet from Elon Musk, which came out earlier this week, sums everything up really nicely. I support people choosing whatever diet makes them happy. 
but it's true that everyone going vegan still wouldn't stop climate change. Moving billions of tons of hydrocarbons from deep underground into the atmosphere and ocean is fundamentally the issue. And that's what's going on here. People are looking at animals that have been on this earth for millions of years, millions of years with plants and have supported the carbon cycle. They poop, they pee, they urinate, they, they pound back in to the soil, the minerals that they're consuming, and the whole cycle gets recycled when the plants take in the carbon and the emissions. It's when you take an unnatural amount, an ungodly amount of fossil fuels that would not have been extracted naturally in the cycle, and you release it and burn it in the atmosphere, that's what's causing this. And these, these major vegan advocates who are famous are pushing this agenda while they're actually not abstaining or showing any sort of evidence about the fossil fuel, the real picture of the equation. I think it's ironic that they can fly a private jet, which is extremely expensive to the atmosphere and burns a lot of emissions, and then they can, and then people can go out there and just tout how, go, how great they're doing green things for the world, when in reality, ruminant animals have been roaming the earth for hundreds of millions of years and support the carbon cycle. Dr. Sal, you know, a good friend of mine, Paul Car Carnivore MD, has posted some really great posts. I'm gonna flash through to a couple quick ones before we wrap on this quick video. The FAO data shows cows produce 14.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions, equal to transportation. This is the information people are citing. The EPA says 1.8%. The EPA says 1.8% are for cows versus 26.4%. Plant-based advocates always cite this first statistic of 14.5% on global greenhouse gases, despite the fact that it's incorrectly calculated. And here's what Paul kind of breaks down here. So there's multiple problems with the number here. 14.5% number is all livestock globally as a percentage of man-made emissions. There are a number of problems with this number. Number one, US production of livestock is much more efficient than developing countries and should not be lumped in with these. In developing countries, manure is often burned for heat, inflating livestock CO2 numbers. Number three, non-athropogenic GHG, greenhouse gas emissions, are substantial and ignored here, inflating the percentages. A more accurate number would be a percent of total greenhouse gas emissions, not just man-made. Claims by the NYT and other media outlets that this 14.5% is equivalent to cars, planes, ships, and trucks is just plain false. I can't believe the New York Times could be so badly mistaken in their numbers. Eliminating all cattle in the U.S. would decrease greenhouse gases by 0.38%. I'm working with Ballerstad, and he goes on. But essentially, the point here is they're miscalculating, they're misciting information here, and people are essentially jumping all over this, spreading this misinformation. So again, it's an exciting time, it's a, it's, a, it's a different time, there's a lot going on here, but I'm excited to see Joe Rogan and, and see what he can share with the community. I'm excited about our upcoming book. My book is complete, it's going through the editing process. I will be dropping that. If you haven't signed up for the list down below, go check it out, it's gonna be a big deal. I spent a lot of time putting this together and I think it's gonna really help explain a lot of what's going on and help people better understand how to implement this diet. If you haven't done it well, it's gonna show you my exact approach to it over the last year and a half, my blood work, I put my labs in there. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, as always, I wish the best. I hope that we can get optimized to our best health and performance. And I appreciate you hit that like button, share this video if you found it helpful, comment, subscribe, let me know what's going on in your world as far as your world carnivore month, if you're gonna be doing it or not. And thank you so much.